Hello everyone. Hey Living Faith. How's everybody doing? I pray that you are doing well, that you are safe, healthy, prospering, and at peace. Amen. Even in the midst of all our troubles. Amen. And what we're facing. God is still good. God is faithful. God, we don't need anybody except God in our lives. God can make everything happened. I heard somebody once say, um, you plus God is everything. So, so we just trust God. We're just believing him for these hard times and these trying days, but God is faithful and he is able, you know, there's a reason that the scriptures, uh, is in the Bible and it says that with God, all things are impossible and that nothing is impossible with God because it's the truth. And so as long as we trust in God and have faith in him, God's going to make everything up before his glory. Amen. It might not be the way that we think or the way that we planned or that we wrote down specifically, but God's going to get glory as long as we trust him and wait upon him. Amen. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you for your word that is our life and it's appropriate for everything that we could ever go through and uh, for every situation in life, uh, your word has the answers and you have the answers. And so, Father, we thank you that you have not left us alone, that you was, are always with us. You said you never leave us or forsake us. So we just thank you again in Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to spend a little bit more time, uh, namely, uh, mainly because this is something that interests me. Uh, which is the fear of the Lord. And so I want, just wanted to share a few minutes with you talking about the fear of the Lord, the relevance and the remedy. The fear of the Lord, the relevance and the remedy. And uh, we've been hearing, you know, if you've been looking, listening to the prophets, this is the, this is the era of where God is going to reset, renew, restore uh, things. And this is also the era where in order for God to do what he wants to do in our lives, this has to be a new era of the fear of the Lord. And that the fear of the Lord wants to come sweeping in and manifest in our midst and in this nation and in the world so that he can be glorified in all of this. In this new era, this will be a time of acceleration and an increase in favor and promotion and elevation but it will be or take place, let me put it that way, it will take place in the place of the fear of the Lord. And uh, one of the reasons why this topic interests me is because I know that God wants to bless all of his people and that he wants to manifest himself in mighty ways. You know, Second Chronicles 16, 9, it says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth looking he's looking for somebody whose heart is perfect towards them now that word perfect it means whole it means complete uh it implies someone who is ready to keep covenant now we know that god is going to keep his end of the covenant his side of the covenant but we he's looking for people like us like you and me who uh whose heart is perfect towards them now, and even it also means made ready. God's looking for a heart that's made ready. We can't be the only way that we're going to be made ready, that our hearts are going to be perfect and ready to keep covenant with God is if we operate and if, if we live in the fear of the Lord. And of course, we know that the fear of the Lord is reverential respect and awe for him. It's submission to him. It's obedience to him. And so God is, you know, uh, the Bible, there's many scriptures about uh, it uses the word simple. I'm just a simple person. You're just a simple person. We're, we're not some by, by men's, um, by men's uh, uh, rating. We're not anybody that's great or wonderful or fantastic. Maybe you feel like you don't have any charisma or you don't attract people to yourself. Well, look, all you got to do is be simple. And God says he'll teach the simple. He'll manifest himself to the simple. And so, but he is looking for somebody whose heart is perfect and made ready for him and who is, and who fears him. Amen. And so 
you know, uh, part of the word, um, the word relevant, it means something that is touching what's happening. And so the word of God is always relevant. Uh, I, I want to, uh, uh, I gave you the title, the fear of the Lord and the relevance and the rem remedy. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the word of God being relevant and the word of God or the fear of God being a remedy. Now, the word remedy, of course, we know a remedy is something that cures or relieves a disease or a bodily disorder. But then another definition, the second definition of a remedy is something that corrects or removes an evil of any kind. So the fear of the Lord is not only relevant for today and touches everything that's every activity that's happening in this earth and in our lives, the word of God is relevant and it, it can it can address whatever is happening anywhere at any time. And so it's also the remedy, uh, the fear of God. It fixes things. It puts things in proper perspective. It puts us in proper position in order to be blessed by the Lord. You know, Isaiah 33, 6, it says, Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. Listen to that. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of our times. How many, we, we need stability. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of our times. Now, Proverbs 1, 7 and Proverbs 9, 10, it talks about the fear of the Lord that being the beginning of wisdom and uh, not in that uh, order. The fear of the Lord being the beginning of knowledge and the fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom. So this is saying wisdom in Isaiah 33, 6, wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. What time? Any time. Whenever re you read this scripture, whatever generation is reading this scripture, God is saying here that wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times, my times. We are in our times right now. And God wants us to know that wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of our times. The wisdom and knowledge of God will be the stability of our homes, our, our houses, our families, our finances, um, you know, our businesses, our job, our relationships. And it also says, and the strength of salvation. Then it says, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So to us, now I think the Amplify version, it talks about it's the Lord's treasure, but it's our treasure as well, that the fear of the Lord is our treasure and the fear of the Lord is God's treasure, God's treasure to us. That word treasure means a treasure house. It means store. It means supplies of food or drink. It means a magazine of weapons. And so in the fear of the Lord, there is supply not just supply to eat and drink, which, which it includes in the definition, Strong's definition, but it also means in the way of weapons. The fear of the Lord is an actual weapon to us, and it protects us. Uh, so I was really blessed by that. Psalm 19.9, it says, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. How long? The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. So the word of God is not out of date. The word of God is not antiquated. The word of God is, uh, did I say out of style? Um, the, the word of God is still appropriate. The, the word, the fear of God, I'm sorry, the fear of God is still appropriate. It's still necessary. And so it, the fear of the Lord is clean and it endures forever. And then it says in that verse, it says, the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Y'all hear me? The fear of the Lord endures forever. That means the fear of the Lord is forever, for every generation, for every people, for every nation. The fear of the Lord is enduring and it lasts forever. So the fear of the Lord is forever, everybody, is forever. So in other words, there will never be a time, past, present, or future, where the fear of God is not appropriate, it's not worthy of application, there's not a, a time in history or future 
that the word of God has not, the fear of the Lord has not been relevant. And so God wants us to live in his fear. And of course, Deuteronomy chapter six, it talks about Lord said, the Lord said, keep my commandments and, and fear me. So, and he, he told him this, the fear of the Lord. I think you, you may remember when I um, made the point, how God was getting ready to take them into a new land. And one of the important uh, features or one of the important um, attributes or things to have in, in the verse that I just read or the treasure, one of the important treasures to have going into a new land that was going to keep them alive, that was going to keep them well, that was going to cause them to be victorious, that was going to cause them to conquer and take over the new land that God was taking them to. The fear of the Lord was part of that. Amen. And so it's the fear of the Lord that's going to cause us to not only gain possession, uh, gain, um, uh, I don't want to say no notoriety, gain a name. You know, the blessing is uh, God told Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless you. And then um, I'm going to bless everybody that comes after you. And he says, I'm going to make your name great. And so the fear of the Lord uh, is necessary for all those things. You know, now, I, I believe that if God is searching to and fro throughout the whole earth, God is looking for people that he can use. And the reason why I'm... I'm um, honing in on the fear of the Lord is because God wants to use you and me and uh, he wants to use all of us uh, but you know all of the examples in the Bible Abraham Noah Elisha Elijah Jeremiah Paul Peter Jesus everybody that 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 God used they had the fear of the Lord Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 1, it says that one of the seven spirits of the Lord is the fear of the Lord. And it's talking about Jesus. It calls, calls him the rod of Jesse, I believe, in, in those verses in Isaiah 11. But it's talking about Jesus. And one of the spirits that was on Jesus was the fear of the Lord. So if we want God, does anybody under the sound of my voice want God to use you? And if you want God to, now if you don't want God to use you, okay, then I guess you should listen to another message, another sermon. But if you want God to use you in the days ahead, today and the days ahead, ahead, you're going to have to have the fear of the Lord. If you're going to operate in this new era, the fear of God is going to be something that is necessary. And so the fear of the Lord is, uh, it's a remedy for, for the evil, for, uh, a remedy means something that corrects or removes an evil of any kind. The fear of the Lord will is a remedy and it will remove evil from our lives and it will protect us and keep us preserved. Amen. The fear of the Lord is just, it's not anything to be afraid of. It's something to be valued. It's something to want to walk in. Uh, it's something that we want to have. We want to have the fear of the Lord. God doesn't want us to be afraid of him. He just wants us to have an awe of him, the, the awe and the reverential re respect that he deserves. Amen. And I, I believe one of the reasons, you know, that the fear of the Lord isn't evident in the body of Christ is because nobody is seeing God move. I believe in God to see God move in the days ahead. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being cooped up in the house, stuck to this iPad right here where I'm recording. I'm I'm ready to to get out. I want to lay hands on people. I want to do things, and uh, and um, so I'm looking forward to us getting back together corporately. Um, but I'm also believing God at the same time to just use me in whatever way He wants to use me. God is not. God is not quarantined. The, 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 word, uh, the scripture says that the word of God is not bound. Paul was saying, I'm in chains. I'm bound. But he said the word of God is not bound. So we can't stop the word of God. We can't stop the power of it. Um, and so God wants us to maintain his fear. Amen. So the fear of the, the Lord is, is a treasure. The fear of the Lord is forever. 
and it's clean. The fear of the Lord is clean. My goodness. So that means the fear of the Lord will make us clean. It'll clean us up. Amen. How many, how many want to get cleaned up? Got some things to clean up. And so there'll never be a time, past, present, or future, when and where the word of God and the fear of God is not appropriate or relevant or important. Amen. Proverbs 23, verse 17, it says, let, let not your heart envy sinners, but continue in the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord all day long. The word of God or the fear of God, it's always appropriate. It says here in Proverbs 23, 17, that we are to be in the fear of the Lord all day long. We don't take a break from the fear of the Lord. No, we don't take a break. God wants to use you. He wants to use me in a big way. Amen. And so we want to just, uh, we want to make sure we're maintaining our fear, uh, uh, fear of God. Um, Philippians, it talks about that we should be working out our uh, salvation with fear and trembling. And so that means we don't rely on ourselves. Uh, we rely on the Holy Spirit. We rely on God to help us. Uh, it, it says that he is working in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. And so, um, you know, so we should work, be working. We should be working things out on a daily basis. Proverbs 23, 17, again, it says all day long, all day long. Amen. So the fear of the Lord, that's a, that's a, that's something to think about that the fear of the Lord is clean and the fear of the Lord is a treasure. It's not something to be feared. Amen. But it's something reverential respect that we're supposed to have for God. Psalm 34, 11, 12. I'm going to forgive me. I didn't write all my <clears throat> verses down. So I'm going to be reading out of my Bible and turning in my Bible. Psalm 34 verses 11 and 12. I'm going to read those. And it says, come you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life? And loves many days that he may see good by keeping keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it so this scripture is saying um, that that we are to be taught about the fear of the Lord that's what I'm purposing to do right now is teach teaching you teaching me I'm learning about the fear of the Lord and how far it goes and how powerful it is, is and how necessary it is so that we can see the plan of God come to pass in this new era, in this decade of decrees, in this decade of difference. God wants to do some things regardless of what, what is happening around us. The fear of the Lord is going to help, and help us and is going to protect us. So according to these scriptures, the fear of the Lord um, it says, who is a man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? So the fear of the Lord, verse 13, the fear of the Lord causes us to keep our tongue from evil and to keep and the fear of the Lord will keep our lips from speaking deceit. Uh, this past Sunday, I talked about how how we need to encourage ourselves and not be discouraged, not let the enemy discourage us and use our voice, use our mouth, use our words to bring about results that we do not want. And so it's important for us to maintain the fear of the Lord because it's going to cause us to not uh, to not only see many days and love many days and see good, but it, the fear of the Lord, it helps us to keep our tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. The fear of the Lord, it helps us to depart causes us to depart from evil and do good. It causes us also to seek peace and to pursue it. So the fear of the Lord, it keeps us from uh, just having any old kind of speech. It, 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 the fear of the Lord will cause us to speak right words, to speak words that only edify, that build up, that cheer up, that stir up, that cause a person to grow and to flourish. When we speak words to them, when we speak words to our children, to our, our family members, to our congregations, our, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, when we speak words, they're supposed to add to them. And so uh, we're, the fear of the Lord causes us to watch our tongues. 
and to uh, and to speak good. Amen. And uh, Proverbs one verses twenty five through twenty nine. I'm going to turn there. Proverbs twenty five through twenty nine. I'm going to have to skip over some scriptures and get uh, get to the ones that I really want. Proverbs twenty five. Verses 25 through 29. I wrote a, a note here for me to read, so I'm going to read it. 25 through 29. Uh, Proverbs 1. I'm sorry. Proverbs 1. 25 through 29. Let me just find that. Forgive me. All right. I'll give you a chance to get there, too. Proverbs chapter 1, verses uh, 25 through 29, which says, Because you disdain my all my counsel... And would have none of my rebuke, I will I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm, and your destruction comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish I don't know why I wrote this oh here <laughs> I'm gonna skip down. <laughs> I'm gonna skip down to verse twenty nine. It says, Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. TMI, too much information. And so according to Proverbs chapter 1 here, it says that we have to choose the fear of the Lord. It's a choice that we have to make. God's not going to make us fear the fear him. Uh, uh, your pastor can't make you fear the Lord. To fear the Lord is a choice that you have to make. And whether we choose it or not choose it, we're going to suffer the consequences so it's up to us in these days because the fear of the Lord is a treasure, because the fear of the Lord is clean, because the fear of the Lord is forever. We want to choose the fear of the Lord. Amen. Proverbs 3 and verse 7. Let's go there. It's not far. Proverbs 3 and verse 7. It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So this verse is telling us that we can't, there's no way when we fear the Lord, there's no way that we can associate with evil and fear the Lord. They, we, they don't coexist. The fear of the Lord and evil cannot coexist. And so that's why we have to get rid of evil and so that the fear of the Lord can operate and function and dictate in, in our lives. Amen. Let's see here. I've got a lot of scriptures. Um, Uh, Psalm 25 and verse 12. Go there if you have your Bible. Psalm 25 and verse 12. I'm going to try to turn as much as I can. It says, Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. Uh, and so uh, in verse 13, He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. Verse 14, The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. So uh, those verses are telling us if we want to be taught of the Lord, we have to have the fear of the Lord. Amen. And so in, in this verse in Psalm 25, verses 12 through 14, um, the fear of the Lord is the remedy for going the wrong way. The fear of the Lord is is the remedy for going the wrong way. It says, him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity. So the fear of the Lord will cause us to choose the right path. It's the remedy. You, you know, we might be anxious and say, well, I don't want to make that choice. I don't want to do that because I don't want to stray away from God. But that verse is saying that the fear of the Lord will cause you and help you to choose the right path, and it's the remedy for going the wrong way. Amen? Praise God. Proverbs 10, 27. Let's look at that. Let me see if I wrote the whole thing down. No, Proverbs. Proverbs 10, 27. Proverbs 10, 27. Amen? Do you have your Bibles? Make sure you write these scriptures down. Proverbs 10, 27. It says, The fear of the Lord prolongs days. But the years of the wicked will be shortened. So what this verse is telling us, that the fear of the Lord is a remedy for a short life. In other, let me put it this way. You live longer when you have the fear of the Lord in your life versus not the fear of the Lord. You live longer with the fear of the Lord in your life than without it in your life. 
And so the fear of the Lord is a remedy for a short life. Amen. Now, I, uh, one good report or example I want to give of that is when you fear the Lord, it causes you to downplay, to not give credence, not give power to other things and other people. For example, if you get an evil report from the doctor, well, the fear of the Lord that tells us that by Jesus stripes we're healed, that tells us that the word of God is life to us and health to all our flesh, medicine to all our flesh, the fear of the Lord and believing that God's word is true and that God is a man and he cannot lie. It's impossible for God to lie. And so when a man, when anybody brings us a report that is contrary to the word of God, that is considered an evil report. And so the fear of the Lord will prolong your life. If, if the, if the, uh, if the doctor's report says you're not going to live long, then the fear of the Lord will cause you to say that I will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. So when we have the, the fear of the Lord in our lives, it causes us to live a longer life than when the fear of the Lord is not in our lives. Amen. Because the fear of the Lord, it prolongs life. The fear of the Lord makes us live longer. So that means the, the fear of the Lord, it's a remedy for a short life. It will keep us from death. It will keep us from destruction. Scripture says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from, from all their destru destruction. But we have to have the, a reverential respect for the Lord. Say, so, oh no, that's not what the Lord says. The Lord says that by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. The Lord says he's going to take sickness uh, out of my midst. The Lord says he's my Jehovah Rophe. I'm the Lord, your, your healer. I'm your physician. So I fear the Lord. And that means that doctor's report is wrong. That means that mortgage company's report is wrong. You, you can even, if you get fired from your job, you can even say that's wrong. Because the Lord said he's going to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. It, the Lord says that whatsoever things I desire when I pray, believe that I receive them or take them. Believe that I take them. I'm, I'm taking my job. Look, I'm already working here. I'm not losing my job. That's my job. So the fear of the Lord is a remedy for uh, a short life. Proverbs 14, 21, or 26. It says, Proverbs 14, 26, in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. So that means the fear of the Lord is the remedy for all other forms and sources of fear. Remember Psalm 23 and verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because the fear of the Lord. Because the Lord and the fear of the Lord is with me. And the, so the fear of the Lord is a protection against all other fears. Remember, the fear of God trumps the fear of any other kind of fear that can come against us in this earth. So the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. That means I can have confidence that God's going to provide for me, that God's going to protect me. We talked about how we're not cooperating with the resurgence of COVID-19. That's because we fear the Lord. And so we're not going to fear COVID-19 because I fear the Lord. I reserve my fear. That's where we reserve the fear and, and we reject it for any other thing because we're reserving our fear for God and what he says and for what he has established. So that protects us from any other type of fear that will come at us. Amen. Proverbs 19, 23, it says the fear of the Lord leads to life. So the fear of the Lord is our remedy of, of a path of death. The fear of the Lord, Proverbs 19, 23 says, the fear of the Lord leads to life and he that has it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. So the fear of the Lord, it leads to life. So that's a remedy of our remedy to our lot instead of our lives leading to death. Jesus said, I come, the Satan comes, but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and have more abundantly. So the fear of the Lord, it leads to life. And he that has it has what? He that has the fear of the Lord shall abide satisfied. So that means the remedy, the fear of the Lord is the remedy 
to not being satisfied. It's the remedy to uh, being visited with evil. So when we have the fear of the Lord, we won't be visited for evil. That's a promise that God made to us. That's not just pie in the sky. That's not just some verse that's been quoted. That's a promise from God. And he's telling us that when you have my fear, when you live according to my fear, that you shall abide satisfied. That's something that we need to be standing on right now in the, in the, um, in the state of our nation that we're living in right now with finances and with sickness and disease. And so the fear of the Lord is, is remedies for all, for, uh, all of these things and for many things. Acts 9.31, let's see what that says. Acts 9.31, remember, according to Isaiah chapter 11, that the fear of the Lord is one of the characteristics uh, that was on Jesus Christ, one of the characteristics of the spirit of the Lord was um, a, a spirit of the fear of the Lord. And so it's important for us as believers that we walk in the fear of the Lord because that's how the Holy Spirit is going to lead us to walk in the fear of the Lord. Psalm 2 and 11, before we go to Acts 9, 31, Psalm 2, 11, it says, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. So that's telling us that the fear of the Lord and rejoicing go together. Isn't that something? That's what we don't understand sometimes. You say, well, Pastor Connie, you're talking about the fear of the Lord. You know, sometimes I just don't understand. But the fear of the Lord, it says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Rejoice with trembling. So the fear of the Lord and rejoicing, they actually go together. So I'm not afraid. I don't have a problem. You don't have a problem fearing the Lord because you know there's joy that goes with it. Amen. Now, the fear and trembling is because we want to have a reverential respect of God for who he is. You know, we need to pray and ask God for for um for the a proper a proper um a proper concept, a proper uh revelation. We need a revelation of the fear of God. We need to uh, we need to lift him high. Uh, the scripture says he, he was high and lifted up. And then uh, uh, the, the Bible says that his train filled the temple. So we need a revelation of God's character and God's nature and God's great love wherewith he loved us. We need a revelation of who God is. I challenge you to pray and ask the Lord for a revelation of who he is so that we can have the proper fear of him. And so when we have the proper fear of him, we don't have fear of man. The, fe the fear of man, it brings terror. It, it brings torture, the Bible says, that, when we, that, that, that the fear of man, and the, we're not talking about demonic terror. Demonic terror causes us to be afraid. It causes us to be paralyzed. It causes us to retreat. It causes us to go backwards, but the fear of the Lord, it promotes us. It brings life to us. It extends our life. It showed the fear of the Lord shows us what path to take. The, uh, the, did I say the fear of the Lord? It protects us. It tendeth to life. And so we want to have the fear of the Lord so that the fear of the enemy, which is crippling um, our nation right now and, tr and crippling the church. The fear of the devil is crippling and paralyzing the people of God. But it's going to be the fear of God that's going to release us, that is going to liberate us, that is going to uh, unlock us out of the fear that's hovering over our nation. And, and the fear of the Lord is going to liberate us and set us free once again. Anybody want to be free in the Lord and ha uh, have strong confidence, the scripture says. So we want to have strong confidence in the Lord once again. And so we have to develop, continue to develop. Remember um, Proverbs 23, 17, it says uh, that we should have reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord all day long. We need to have the fear of the Lord all day long. We don't take a break. When we wake up in the morning, the fear of the Lord should be there. When we uh, take a nap, 
uh, in the day. When we're at work, the fear of the Lord should be operating in our lives. When we lie down our heads at night, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord will actually protect us. I fear God. I trust God. So I don't fear anybody breaking in my house. I don't fear my house burning down. I don't have fear of getting in a car accident, anything like that. The fear of the Lord actually brings us comfort and contentment and joy we read in the scriptures and so we want to maintain the fear of the lord amen praise god acts 9 31 and we'll um uh yeah acts 9 31 let me read that real fast 9 31 and i am out of time come on page Acts 9.31, and it says, I'm sorry, let me get it here. Acts 9.31, you getting it? You getting it? You writing it down? Acts 9.31, it says, then the churches throughout, the, the, my, my Bible has a, a paragraph over this verse, it said, or paragraph title, it says the church prospers. Uh, Acts 9.31, it says, then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified and the walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit they were multiplied let me read that again uh, throughout all Judea Galilee and Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit and they were multiplied I want to end here there is comfort in the fear of the Lord, there's not, there's no fright. There's actually comfort in the fear of the Lord. That, that word comfort, it means paraclesis. It's a calling near. It's an exhortation, an encouragement. So that, that verse is saying that the fear of the Lord, it brings us exhortation. The fear of the Lord brings us encouragement. The fear of the Lord uh, has uh, it calls us near. It also means a refreshment. So in the fear of the Lord in this verse, the fear of the Lord is actually a refreshment, an exhortation. It's a call. It pulls us near, and it's an encouragement to us. Uh, anybody just, I just thank God for his fear. I thank you, him for the protection of it, for the power of it. And they said that it was multiplied in the church. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that the, the fear of the Lord, the fear of you, God, would be multiplied in our church, in our midst, not only in Living Faith Christian Center, but in your whole church, in the body of Christ. And that the fear, the, your fear would give us comfort. It would draw us near. It would exhort us. It would encourage us. And it would refresh us. And we thank you for it. We ask you for that. We also ask you for a revelation of the fear of the Lord. Uh, Lord, we want to, to properly, reverentially respect you. We want to have the proper awe of you. You are not just, um, you're not just a, a person. You're not just a natural leader. You are God Almighty. You are the Lord. And, and you are the living God the one who created heaven and earth. And we, we pray for, I pray for all of us right now, Lord, that you would give us a proper perspective of your fear so that it'll protect us, comfort us, draw us near, lead us to life, and just cause our lives to uh, uh, put, uh, that we would have the fear of you in our hearts, Lord, so that when you're looking for somebody to do great exploits and you're looking for somebody whose heart is perfect towards you, Lord, you can find us, you can find me, and you can find them, everybody under the sound of my voice. And we thank you for it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Well, it is time for tithes and offerings. So I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, God, um, he blesses his people. God is is not concerned about what is happening in our nation. He doesn't matter. It, it, he's not uh, concerned about how much we're, well, he's, he, he cares, 
But in other words, it doesn't limit God. We, we've read in Genesis 26 that God blessed Isaac even in a time of famine. So in other words, it doesn't matter to God what's going on, how hard things are. If he meets all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, it do, we shouldn't lose any sleep over. We just cast that care on the Lord. Lord, you know I need you know I need a place to sleep. You know I need something to eat. My kids need clothes. We need a car. We need gas. God, you know we need all these things. So we're just trusting you. We're casting all of our cares. We maintain the fear of the Lord. You're going to take care of us. The fear of you, God, causes us to believe your word and take it for what you have said. And we, we, God, we know that you make promises and you keep them. We don't keep them. God keeps them. Psalm 112, verses 1 through 3, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. It says uh, in verse 3, wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. Listen to verse 2 again. His seed shall be mighty. Well, verse 1, it talks about the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. Do, we, do you delight greatly in his commandments? Yes, we delight gr greatly in his commandments. And this, then God has said, then his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. And the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. And then it says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. In Jesus' name, wealth and riches are in my house. I might have malt coming out of my pockets and my handbag right now. They're fluttering out. But this, according to the scripture, those that fear the Lord, wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Amen. And so we're not concerned about uh, the economy. We are concerned about the economy of God. God's not broke. He's not short of, of um, he's not short of um, blessings. He's not short of wealth and riches. God knows how to get things to his people. However, God has given us principles that will cause the blessing of God to uh, overtake us. And one of those things is God, he, God has instructed us in Genesis chapter 14. He's instructed us in Malachi chapter three, Matthew 23, 23, Hebrews chapter seven. God has instructed us to present him to the tithe, to worship him. You know, we, we worship God with our money by presenting him with the tithe that belongs to him. Leviticus said that the tithe is holy and it belongs to God. So we bring, of course, tithe, it means 10%. It means 10% of all of our income. We present that to God. We worship him with it. We, they used to put tithes into a basket and present it to, the, to the, the, the priest. Of course, nowadays, Jesus is our great high priest. And so we present the tithe to Jesus, our, the apostle and high priest of our profession and of our confessions. And so now Jesus receives our tithes and presents it to the Father. And so we still honor the Lord uh, with our tithes. We, we also bring God an offering. Uh, and, and the offering, it, it benefits us. Uh, both the tithes and the offer benefit us. But giving, sowing, bringing, bringing an offering, it causes a harvest to come to us. Isaac sowed 100-fold in that same year that he sowed in famine. When we sow to the Lord, when we sow to where God tells us to sow, we can, we can believe God that we're going to get 30. It says some 30, some 60. When we sow into the kingdom, some 30, some 60, and some 100-fold. I'm believing God for 100-fold. The scripture also describes that our casting our bread upon the water and, and to do it um, not once, um, but to do it again and again. And so that way we always have a wave of return coming back into our lives. To me, it's so important to, con to constantly be sowing because I don't have to worry about when we sow constantly and on a regular basis, we don't have to worry about gaps in our harvest. And so we don't, we don't have to worry about ever being without because we are constantly sowing into the kingdom. 
And so that means we constantly reap a harvest coming back into our lives. Amen. So God has put the, 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 um, God has put sowing and reaping. Uh, there's a time to sow and there's a time to reap. There's seed time and then there's harvest time. And so God has blessed us with seed time and harvest time. He said he gives seed to the sower and he gives bread for our food. So, Father, we just thank you. Let me tell you, there's three ways to give. I don't want to forget that. There's three ways to give. We can give online at lfccnj.com forward slash giving. That's lfccnj.com forward slash giving. That's giving online. You can also give, present your tithes and offerings by giving by text, by texting LFCCNJ to 77977. That's texting LFCCNJ to 77977. Yes. And you can also mail in your text. It's It'll be on the um, underneath the video for you, just in case I say anything wrong. The third way to give is to mail in. You can still mail in your tithes and offerings to 2323 Route 73 in Pensacola, New Jersey. The zip code is 08110. And, of course, there's a fourth way to give, actually. That means you can just drive to the church and, and and drop off your tithes and offerings that way. Amen. We are open from Tuesday. Right now we're open, we're open Tuesday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So I will keep you posted on our hours. I'm looking forward to our, I don't want to be premature. Well, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. Father, we present our tithes and our offerings, whether it's in a pink envelope, whether it's on, online or whether it's by text or whether we're going to do a drive-by or uh, mail it. Father, we just thank you. Father, we bring you this tithe. We worship you with it. It's yours. It's not ours. We thank you that as we present you with this 10%, a tenth, that you will bless our 90%, and you will rebuke the devourer from eating up our seed and eating up our return and eating up our blessing. So, Father, we thank you. That right now the devourer is rebuked for our sakes because you are true to your word. We have the fear of the Lord operating in our lives. Father, we thank you for um, not 30, not 60, but 100 fold return on our giving. In Jesus' name, we thank you that the windows of heaven are open unto us because we are tithers and givers. Father, we thank you. We declare ahead of time. That we, because we are tithers and givers, that you have made us a delightsome land, according to Malachi chapter 3. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we are a delightsome land. Praise God. So just believe God. Um, uh, um, I, I commend you from continuing to be faithful, to uh, uh, send God his tithes and an offering. Um, even though we can't come together, we can't, don't come to a physical building, you've been faithful to still reserve that tithe for God because it's his, and he honors that. And as we honor him, he honors us as we honor him. Amen. Well, I'm out of time. I want to say welcome to uh, any visitors who are here Living Faith Online. Welcome. Uh, Living Faith, I want to uh, just uh, tell you that I love you. I'm looking forward to July 25th, Saturday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Or we're going to just drive in the parking lot, take an hour to just honk our horns and wave and act crazy and silly and shout, yeah, hey, how you doing? You know, and just see each other's face. It's going to be so great. Pray for sunny weather. Amen. But I'm looking forward to seeing you then. Well, God bless you. I call you blessed, happy, fortunate, and power to prosper and to be envied because God already declared it. In Jesus' name, somebody say, I am blessed. God bless you. I love you, and I'll see you soon. See ya.